Welcome back to the narration of those 18 days, the Kurukshetra war. Today, we will discuss the seventh day. During the Kurukshetra war, there are certain days which were highlights, where major events happened. And in some ways, the pace of events accelerated after the 10th day when Bhishma Pitama fell and thereafter every day was momentous now especially during the fifth sixth seventh and to some extent the eighth days the battle went along overall generic lines yes there were there were specific warriors fighting with each other and there were significant encounters but there was nothing stupendous like say when Bhishma picked up a weapon on the ninth day or when Arjuna penetrated through the entire Kaurava army to bring down Jayadrath on the 14th day. And still on these days when nothing major seems to have happened, the battle was progressing and many small but important things were happening. And there were days on which some of the warriors who were not so well known got to play significant roles. Going back to the sports metaphor, if we consider a cricket match, especially a test match, then usually it goes for five days and there are 15 sessions. So pre-lunch, post-lunch and uh, post-tea. Now, not every session may feature dramatic action, but every session is taking the game forward. And in every session, someone or the other is performing. There might be standout performances, there might be breakout performances. So, <clears throat> standout means somebody just performs extraordinarily. Uh, breakout means somebody performs so specially that they were unknown earlier and they become very well known from that point onwards. So, but it is not that in every session the stars are going to uh, going to perform in stellar ways. So th on this day, it is primarily the two lesser known Pandavas, Nakul and Sahadev, who played significant roles. Now, when we talk about the Pandavas, instinctively we think and know that there are five of them. Yet, if we consider their uh, lore, their stories, their pastimes, we usually think primarily about uh, Arjuna's uh, accomplishments as an archer and as a devotee. We think about Bhima's uh, fury and his ferocity in wielding the mace and we think of Yudhishthir's virtue and his diligence in adhering to the principles of dharma. So Nakul and Sahadev are relatively not that well known in the sense of their accomplishments. So here we see the principle of unity and diversity in the Pandavas that they were all like the five fingers of a hand. They are all, each of them individual and all of them united. Each playing their own role. Now, among the Pandavas, Nakul and Sahadev were not as accomplished in war as say Arjuna or Bhima or as virtuous as Yudhishthir. And yet, they were heroes in their own right. And on this particular day, they did something heroic. That was, they engaged with dozens and dozens of Kaurava brothers simultaneously. So if you consider here, the let's try to understand these characters a little bit more and then try to understand the battle contours, the lines along which the battles were fighting, battle were being fought. So, Nakul and Sahadev were the 
twin sons of the Ashwini Kumaras. The Ashwini Kumaras are the celestial physicians and they were begotten through Madri because, because Pandu could not beget sons due to a curse by the, by the sage kingdom. So he invoked the yoga ritual by which some other person could be respect some other respectable person could be called to or invoked to beget children so that the dynasty could be continued so kunti had the benediction by which she could call for gods and accordingly she begot yudhishthir bhima and arjuna through dharma vayu and indra respectively and then when she had three children, Ash, naturally Madhuri also desired to have a child, uh, have some children. And she requested Kun, her husband Pandu, who in turn requested Kunti. And then she invoked the Ashwini Kumaras at that time. Actually, she offered that mantra, she offered to recite that mantra on behalf of Madhuri. And Madhuri invoked the Ashwini Kumaras because they are twins. So from them, the children that were born to Madri were also twins. And they came to be known as Nakula and Sahadev. Now Nakula means, Nakula is dynasty. Nakula means the best in the dynasty. The best in terms of handsomeness. Nakul, distinct, Nakul was considered to be the most attractive looking among all the Pandavas. In fact, not just all the Pandavas, in the whole dynasty at large, he was considered to be extremely attractive looking. Additionally, he was powerful as a sword fighter. He also was good at Ayurveda. He had some learning in that. And conversely, Sahadev, the word Sahadev means Dev is God, Saha is with. So, with gods means he had godly qualities. He is also, if we take Saha as a root, as the shortened form of Sahasra, then hundreds of gods, thousands of gods, he had extraordinary power akin to a large number of gods. Sahadev was especially good at fence fighting. And he was also known to be good at astrology. Now, both Nakul and Sahadev, uh, accompanied the Pandavas through all their tribulations and they played respective roles as they as were assigned. So when the Rajasuya Yagya was to be performed, the four Pandavas went in four different directions and each of them was victorious while fighting on behalf of Yudhishthir Maharaj. So both Nakul and Sahadev conquered the world in the direction that was allo allotted to them just as Bhima and Arjuna conquered the directions that were allotted to them. So, sometimes in a particular, say, sports team, there are so many superstars that other stars may not be so, other stars may not be so well known. Yes, they are also stars in their own right. And if they, if they were not so overshadowed by the superstars, then they would themselves be well known also. So, in some ways, Nakul and Sahadev, they may seem to be overshadowed by, because the, because the others were so superlatively gifted, like Bhima and Arjuna and Yudhishthir. But the important thing is that there is, throughout the Mahabharata, no sense of envy or animosity between the Pandavas. And that's because there was such a bond of love between them. And they all knew that they were loved and they were cared for and they all had a place, they all had a role to play. What ensured the cooperation between the Pandavas was their shared purpose. They knew that they were all parts of the Supreme Lord and they were all devoted to the Lord. So they knew that by the Lord's plan, everybody had a part to play. And we can find fulfillment in our lives 
by playing our part well not by uh, craving for and slaving for getting a bigger part just doing our part better is more important than getting getting a bigger part so nakul and sahadev played their parts and they played it very well and they all had their important days but from the very first day nakul fought faced off with dushasan and dushasan was the second most powerful among the kaurava sons he was the second son and the second most powerful after duryodhan and he defeated dushasan and he could have killed him but he spared dushasan why because bhima had taken the vow to kill the sons of kill all the sons of the pandava of the kauravas so therefore he fought again he fought and overpowered dushasan but let him go this is how there is a culture of respect among the brothers and there was also there were also times when arjuna was could have overpowered some of the kaurava brothers and could have killed them he overpowered but he did not kill them now nakul also uh, and nakul and sahadev played significant role in the last few days on the 17th and 18th days they um, overpowered significant warriors there was karana's son and uh, also shakuni's son uh, uluka who had come with a provocative message from duryodhana before the start of the kurukshetra war he was killed by nakula and sahadev had taken a vow during the kurukshetra war uh, that he would kill um, kill uh, shakuni and that's what he did eventually on the last day of the kurukshetra war this was a vow he had taken uh, during the gambling match when all the pandavas had and their wife draupadi had been grievously insulted by the Ka- kauravas especially by duryodhana and dushasana along with karna and shakuni of course now on this day the kauravas fought in hordes that means that the kaurava brothers also if we consider duryodhan dushasan are the those who are well known among them janadar brother vikarna he is also somewhat known because he was more virtuous or he was the least vicious among all of them and he at one time stood up to duryodhana and when duryodhana was going ahead with his vicious scheme of dishonoring the pandavas and disrobing draupadi vikarna opposed it although he was silenced by karana but still he stood up so he, apart from him there is not many other kauravas who are well known it all of them were also powerful warriors and while duryodhana had many flaws he also had some abilities he was able to inspire obedience among the 100 kauravas is 99 younger siblings of course at that time there was an overall culture also of obeying one's uh, <clears throat> oldest brother as uh, as the as a representative of the father and that person would also be the successor normally by the principle of primogeniture so that was also a factor to be considered but the kaurav brothers themselves were also powerful in terms of fighting a war and they would often attack in hordes so they would be, of course fighting one by one each of them was individual each of them fought but they would often stick together and all of them or many of them sometimes 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 of them they were all powerful warriors and when all of them would descend or race toward a particular section of the army and attack that uh, opposing army it would be difficult for that army to resist so that's what happened to nakul and sahadev when so on the pandava side and on the kaurava side there were relatively speaking lesser known warriors among the cousins themselves so we could say that this was a battle of the lesser known warriors now if we consider clearly nakul and sahadev were far more virtuous than the kauravas and 
the kauravas in general were given to bhais and they all also had bhais individually and collectively because they all followed the wishes duryodhan and normally it is said that dharmo rakshati dharmah that those who are those who are virtuous those who are devoted they will be protected by their very virtue and devotion the word dharma has many different meanings it refers not just to the moral codes or duties that may be <clears throat> present in the particular culture or society but it refers to the innate nature of all living beings and the activities that help us function harmoniously along according to that nature so when the kauravas and the pandavas were fighting uh, actually dharma was on the side of the pandavas and in this particular battle nakul and sahadev had dharma on their side now it is true that dharma will protect those who strive to protect dharma this uh, no doubt about this saying at the same time this saying is not a license for neglecting one's own uh, uh, one's own preparation or for neglecting the ground reality the material reality the universe operates at multiple levels that means that simultaneously through one action many factors may be in action so for example if someone jumps off a 10 story building now the principle of gravity is in action and that's why they are falling down now uh, so along with that it might that another principle might be in action is a person's free will being used destructively that person may be so frustrated in their lives that they may want to end it, end their lives or the person may be careless and then it is negligence or that person might have been pushed down and then that malevolence on someone else's part so human will human psychology work in parallel with with the with the forces of nature such as gravity so this is just in the same action of a person falling from a building we see the mechanical and the human personal factors working together so in the same action multiple factors may be in action now beyond this you can also consider that there are there are forces beyond the human that are also functioning and not just mechanical forces from nature but there are celestial forces there are the principles of karma uh, overseen by the higher beings and their uh, their will their their plan is also in action and ultimately nothing happens without the sanction of the supreme lord so dharma we could say is a higher principle that governs all of existence and this principle is not to be neglected it is a important principle but at the same time just in the name of dharma the material principles are also not to be neglected so materially speaking arjuna worked very hard to uh, improve and excel in his archery skills similarly bhima worked spectacularly hard to become so powerful in mace fighting similarly the material competence even for virtuous warriors matters just because of being virtuous doesn't mean that they will be victorious they also need to be industrious industrious means that they have to work diligently in developing their talents in acquiring the necessary skills of the material level so on this day it was spectacular that nakul and sahadev fought and withstood the attack of the kavra brothers in a la in a, in a horde like attack manner they all attacked collectively and nakul and sahadev withstood it for a long period of time and their heroism individually and as a team becomes manifest on this day eventually however the sheer number of the kaurava brothers was so much that both of them started becoming overwhelmed as they became wounded other kaur pandava warriors came to their aid 
and they held back the Kauravas. So this was one of the days in which the lesser known warriors from both sides fought and had relatively prominent roles and Nakula and Sahadev had their day when though they were not victorious but the very fact that they resisted a large number of Kaurava warriors for a significant number of time indicates their enormous promise and it also illustrates the principle that while we are while we need to be virtuous to be victorious we also need to be industrious so that at the ground level we have the abilities that are required for victory thank you very much re krishna